Okay, welcome to the show, Shakti, and Thank it's you. always a pleasure talking to you about quality reading material that Definitely Room to Read is working on. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to know how how difficult uh, uh, the if you want to make a book for children. So what are the difficulties you face? Uh, let me use the word challenges rather. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, we must understand that a book for a child has to be well thought through. It's a specific product. It's not like just creating any other book. Uh, it is important to understand that stories or storytelling have a very uh, strong appeal to the cognitive landscape of a child. And books, especially, which harbor the story in a script, you know, has various ways of engagement with the child. And probably uh, when a child is about, I mean, learning to read, not every possible, you know, let's say step of learning to read can probably be harbored under one book. So let's also understand that there has to be a variety of books for children when they are learning to read. In Room to Read, what we do is, as part of our QR room, so uh, we, we quality reading the material. quality reading materials, what we do is we try to create more books, we call them leveled texts, but probably we do not get to the level of a CV control or a vocabulary control. Because we do create such materials as part of the instruction uh, program of Room to Read, so there is plenty of that uh, uh, kind of material that is available to the child and it is possible to create such materials but at the same time any material that you create with a certain letter control or a word control may not have a very high literary value it may have tremendous amount of contributions to literacy per se as literary value uh, those texts may not be the best things to do mm -hmm. so in the in the uh, quality reading materials we want to build up leveled texts which have a wonderful storyline which have a context which is closer to the child's life and heart coming back to like you have writers you interact with writers mm. all the time mm. and definitely it's very difficult to find people with that mm. kind of sense that mm. you you quoted Tagore and mm -hmm. because they he had a sense you mm -hmm. know that's what I'm trying to figure out from you so is it difficult to give brief to a writer and do you find it easy to find a writer what, what do you say no uh, even when people are writing for children in our country uh, in various languages they are more used to a certain kind of texts for the child some would want the text to be very very moralistic some would want the text to be um, you know you know I mean like overstudied with the fun element and probably has not thought much about the linguistic elements of that particular book. So it's never easy to find out. So we may find brilliant writers, but it is always important to work with those writers for very specific requirements and, um, you know, very specific decisions that we need to take when you're creating a book for a child. So whoever you're working with, there is a lot of interaction that goes into bef before even you know the the thought of a book is is concretized in in in, uh, in in shape how do you interact with writers so what do you say and how do what do you narrate to them that okay here are what you are looking at so what are your thoughts behind it what, how do you make them understand the kind of books we are looking at room to read has a has a very systematized workshop structure for even creating those books. And in those workshops, what we do is first we try and introduce target audience first, like what is that child like for whom you're writing? Then what is the linguistic uh, premise in which you're trying to write? For mostly it's in Hindi that we have tried to do. Uh, then uh, it looking like, you know, what are simpler ways of doing a leveled book? What is leveling? You know, what is a good story within so many constraints? What will help a child read? All of these come very systematic to those writers in various kinds of dialogues with them within those uh, few days in the workshop. Mm -hmm. it, tell us about the workshop because it's very interesting that you bring in writers and illustrators together. It's what actually helpful because when you're thinking, ideating a story, you know, when the storyboarding is done, let's say, then when you start interacting with the 
illustrator or when the author is interacting with the illustrator and they're jointly thinking about a product a good product then uh, probably there are various things in that uh, in that controlled premise of the language which is probably better shown through an illustration or probably something in the illustration uh, which needs to be uh, probably uh, you know well exhibited through a wonderful Mm, line that the author creates so it, it is once again a dialogue it's like two domains interacting with each other with certain set principles and uh, so I think it was the last year that we tried to do them do this workshop together with the authors and the illustrators and I think it worked better okay mm. no it, it, one thing that what we are looking at you know to make somebody interest in reading you know to mm -hmm. create that kind of reading and plus develop that habit you know so how do you go about it so first that uh, reading is not a biologically primary fact so reading is a learned thing it's a learned skill and you need explicit in instructions to be able to read and while you are reading you also need to read at an optimal speed with engagement with the meaning of the text at the same time so it's not that you learn uh, to read with a certain optimal speed first and then you uh, bother about the meaning that's not the case so while your uh, working memory is working on a text you have to be uh, work i mean reading with an optimal speed so that your cognitive resources are free for deeper meaning making so if this is what reading is all about you would see that it is number one a parallel processing of texts through very uh, you know it's, it's a parallel task which is going on in the brain you are looking at a text you are thinking about it you're thinking about reading it with a certain speed you're thinking about the words so many things have to come together for reading secondly you can read with uh, a certain optimal speed and you are able to get to a certain meaning of the text but if you want to get a deeper meaning of that particular text you know if you want to make an informed opinion about that particular text that deeper reading is often which has to happen at leisure which has to happen with the right kind of time required for it so given all of this reading habit building is not about the number of hours spent in reading it is not about the number of books i check out it is not about the number of books that i have read it is about a deeper engagement so if you really want to promote a reading culture if you want to develop habit in anybody in yourself for that matter first what you need to do is to be able to understand that there are various ways of developing this multi-layered habit and we need to do various things you need to read to your child you need to expose uh, your child to books you need to sit with your child to be able to you know go deep into the meaning of the text you need to start loving a book I mean your child needs to see that you are spending quality time with a book so just trying to like just to twist it around once again uh -huh. you know just for, for a child you know he or she is exposed to a book you know, mm -hmm. for the first time so how how what kind of books do you do you recommend and how do we go about it i would say that uh, it can be a variety of things for example uh, it can even be a picture book with wonderful engaging pictures where where you can build up a narrative out of those pictures it can be a book which has more pictures and less text but the text actually leads the whole narrative building uh, if the child is just about learning to read and or, or if you if you could just think of uh, you know a kind of a text where you're playing with the language I mean I remember uh, when I was learning to read in my uh, in my childhood I think the book that we were given the most other than the readers the primers that uh, Bengal had I think one big book which I mean one book which had a brilliant tech, uh, influence on all of us was Sukumare's Abul Tabul you know nonsense rhymes in which were which were very akin to what Edward Lear had so even the the play of the language was also very interesting for us to get engaged so there are various ways of engaging a child there is no one way I think because I read a very interesting quote you know hmm. that it's not by app hmm. it's 
in your lap the mm. child is going to read you know yeah. that's a fan mm. fantastic quote it's, you know? it's a fantastic quote but then we must also realize that uh, you know we are born in a, in a time or many of the children who are born now they are born in a certain time where probably we are reading more on digital format than on f physical books nice. physical books have no substitute let's understand that but at the same time if uh, if you agree to the fact that you're reading through the app you're reading through the, the whatsapp for that matter so let's also understand that whatever format that you are reading in digital or print i would always say print is better but let's say that whatever format you know what we need is my ability to critically and deeply engage with whatever I'm reading, which means that you don't pick up a WhatsApp uh, message and immediately forward it. You need to think about it. <laughs> no, no. Coming back to now, the thing thing is, you will find the audio books are coming in, mm -hmm. you know, because if you're talking about digital technology. Mm -hmm. So we are heading towards something that, okay, I think we are going back to the old tradition that we used to have Guru Sishya Parampara that, you know, that, okay, mm -hmm. the oral tradition. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether we are heading towards that and do you think the reading will take go if, to another level? If you are thinking on what you have heard, then probably you're going back to the wonderful, illustrious academic uh, practices of ancient India. If you're just hearing it on, on, in a car on the way back from office and not thinking about it, you're going nowhere. Okay. It was a pleasure talking to you, Shakti. Pleasure is mine. <laughs> <laughs>